So welcome back to the range. Uh, today's setting is inside one of our classrooms and we'll be discussing the other. Um, we get a lot of questions uh, when people first see these. They think they're illegal or if they're a, a pre-ban, uh, but they're not. They're what's categorized by the ATF and the state of Connecticut and New York as other. So we'll be discussing that. Did a lot of research uh, on the laws, this particular uh, carbine, and then, of course, we'll, we'll go into details about the brace and how the ATF's ruling is on that. Uh, we also have a selection of optics that we uh, have available here. Uh, and, of course, I'll show you the optic that I had picked to run this. Um, so, in 2013, after the Sandy Hook um, massacre, the state of Connecticut passed legislation that banned what they deemed as assault weapons, or sometimes you hear them as assault rifles. So they specifically said um, that it's a semi-automatic center fire rifle, and it banned the copies and duplicates thereof of the capability of any such rifles, and they had a long list of all the types of rifles that they banned. Um, along with a whole list of other components that they had banned, such as uh, being able to take a detachable magazine that holds more than 10, folding or telescoping stocks, uh, forward pistol grips, flash suppressors, and an overall length of uh, less than 30 inches. So with all that, looking at this, Obviously, you can see that there's a lot of things on here that they had banned, such as the flash suppressor, the forward grip, um, and we'll be discussing everything. So this particular model is made by Delta Level Defense. Um, they're the company that we go to when we are uh, contracting out for others. Um, we don't deal with any other companies, even though there's a plethora of companies in the state of Connecticut. Uh, like Stag Arms, Troy, so on and so forth. We do make others. Uh, we like this company. Uh, we like the people that work there. And uh, we have a good relationship with them. And uh, the, the quality of product that they're, they're turning out is uh, phenomenal, in our opinion. So, I'll give you a brief history on uh, Delta Level Defense, or DLD. Um, in September of 2017, DLD filed formal paperwork with the ATF. Uh, and the uh, firearms technology branch um, for an other. And uh, they originally asked for 9mm, 5.56, and 300 blackout. And they were awarded uh, a variance from the ATF to manufacture others. And then they went on again to get um, uh, another type of variance for other calibers, which we'll discuss later all the calibers that we can get this in. Um, this happens to be a 5.56, so according to the state of Connecticut, it is multi uh, because it can handle 5.56 and, of course, 2.23. So let's start with definitions on um, assault weapons or AOWs. So when it comes down to defining what these are, according to the ATF, you have what they call assault weapons. Um, or semi-automatic uh, centerfire rifles and then of course they're, they're the criteria that's there and if it doesn't match that then it went into the AOW or any other weapon category um, but because of the way this one's built uh, it is neither so it is not a rifle because it does not have a buttstock um, and it's too short to be a rifle um, and it's not a pistol because the barrel length is too long and it has the forward grip right here. So, not a pistol. Um, therefore, they deemed it an other, which makes it completely compliant with the state of Connecticut and New York. Alright, so I'm going to try and make this quick and easy to understand. So, this is not a long gun, according to the state of Connecticut, because there's no buttstock on it. It's a forearm brace. And the barrel itself is less than 16 inches. It's not a pistol because the barrel length is over 12 inches and it's got a vertical grip on it. Those two combinations of a forearm brace and a vertical grip 
put it in the category of other. If you took the vertical grip off and try to run it as this, it's an AR pistol and it's illegal. If you took the brace off with the buffer tube, put a different buffer tube on and a buttstock, then that is a SBR and you don't have a tax stamp, so it's illegal to own. But as long as you have the brace and the forward grip, it's an other. This is the base model of an other. You can take the forward grip, you can change it out for a different vertical grip. You can move the vertical grip forward and back in the different M lock areas depending on how you want uh, your arms stretched out. You can get different braces that are adjustable. Uh, this particular one doesn't do that. There's other ones you can upgrade to that are forearm braces and are fully adjustable because forearms obviously come in different sizes. So I hope you guys understand that. Okay, so let's talk about why the gun looks so naked. This is the base model. This is how it's gotta be. You can add to, but you can't take away from. So once you strip off all your tactical stuff, you know, your optics, your flip ups, your flashlights, it has to look like this to be compliant with the state law. So now let's talk about the optics. You can order them with flip ups, um, but this particular model came with no flip ups. Uh, this way you could pick the flip ups you wanna put on there. So when it came to running optics, uh, I didn't want to really break the bank. And a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I need to get the EOTAC or, or the, the ACOG. That's all great if you want to spend the money. Um, but if you don't want to spend the money, there's a lot of great alternatives out there. We happen to offer a few of them. So I ended up picking the Firefield uh, Reflex Sight. And I can't complain about this red dot. Works great. Uh, we were running drills down in our private range. Uh, I was running and gunning, uh, ran this really through its paces with the site, had absolutely no problems. Uh, this particular site I like because it's got a quick disconnect. So if I'm having problems with it, I can take it off. Uh, all you do is get it on there, slide it back, lock it, and it's retained greatly. And I was running around with this uh, banging into my plate carrier, uh, doing quick draw, so on and so forth, didn't have any problems. Uh, never got loose, never lost zero. Uh, I absolutely love it. Now, I might upgrade in the future, but for right now, not trying to break the bank, this is going to work just fine. If this isn't your speed and you wanted something else, we also have the 1x22 compact red dot sight called the Impulse. Uh, by the same company, Firefield. We have a little bit larger one, which is a 1x28 red dot impulse uh, made by Firefield. That's available. And like I said, they're reasonably priced. Uh, if you wanted something a little more like a scope, then we have the Rapid Strike. Which I'll pull out of the box right now, which looks like this. Uh, this one has screws on it, so once you put it on the rail, and you lock it down, you, you can't just pop it off and, and go if need be. Uh, we were playing with this one. It has great zoom on it. Uh, the optics are clear, and the uh, reticle is extremely bright in the day, and uh, when night comes and low light, you can dial it down. Worked perfectly. So put that back in the box. So that's the rapid strike from Firefield. We also offer sight marks. Uh, this is similar to that one. This one is the SM1308 2AR.223 Core TX, which takes your normal mounts. This one is nice because not only can you turn the reticle to red, uh, but you can also switch over to green for those who might have trouble seeing red or you really want some good contrast. It's good. It's bright in the daylight, uh, even at high noon uh, with, a, with a cloudless sky. And, of course, when the night starts to come, the sun's setting, you can dial it back to a 2 or a 3, and it looks great.
So one of the things I hear a lot uh, dealing with the arm brace is they're like, oh, well, in the state of Connecticut, you can't shoulder it. And I don't like to hold it on my arm and try and hold it out, so on and so forth. And, and I get it. This can be heavy. Um, holding six and a half pounds out there for a while really does start to suck. So when it came to trying to give people answers, because we don't give legal advice, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not even an internet lawyer, um, we looked at what the ATF said, and we know the ATF in 2014, 2015, and 2019 gave rulings. In 2014, I printed them out, so I'm not lying. Uh, 2014, the ATF came out and said that shouldering uh, a what they call a pistol or AR-15 pistol uh, did not change it at all. Uh, you could legally shoulder this. And then in 2015, they reversed themselves. And they said that shouldering a brace will constitute a redesign, turning your pistol into an SBR. So then everybody was upset and we were kind of in limbo again. And then in 2019, the AF, uh, ATF came out and gave a ruling that it says sporadic or incidental uh, shouldering of the arm brace is not illegal. So it is definitely not a strict always yes or always no. Um, when looking for the state of Connecticut, couldn't find any information on it. I asked around. Everyone said they defer to what the ATF says. But I would suggest before you shoulder it and get yourself in trouble, you, you check with the state police and, and see what their stance is on it. In future videos, uh, we're going to be looking at maybe doing some upgrades to this. Uh, maybe different sights, uh, different grip, uh, different attachments for the M-Lock rail. Uh, and most definitely is a, a different forearm brace. I reached out to Delta Little Defense. I talked with the owner and uh, I was expressing how this particular brace for me, uh, I didn't like it because there's no spot for me to run a two point harness. So uh, I wanted to swap it out for the uh, SBA four, which comes with a spot in the back for a QD so I can run that two point harness. It's also fully adjustable. So depending if I want it up close or if I want to stretch it out uh, for stabilization, I have that opportunity and the ability to do that. All right, I'm starting with 10 rounds of the Brass Agia 556. Works perfectly. All right, so the next ammo we're gonna use is some of the crap I found in the back, uh, this tool ammo. Uh, we'll see how it works. I don't know, let's see if this thing eats up some garbage. Okay, so the next box of ammo is this PMC ammo. It comes in little 20 round boxes. We got it in the back of the shop. Load up a mag of 10. It's all brass. Uh, doesn't look very good though. The brass looks worn and uh, old. So let's see how it works. 10 rounds, we'll do them rapid. Cycle just fine, no problems. Okay, so I just finished cleaning up from the video. Uh, it's always fun when you get to shoot. And uh, my radio's going off. So, hopefully you learned something about the Connecticut others. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, if I missed anything, go ahead and uh, let me know. So, and some videos coming up. Obviously, we're going to be making some upgrades. Uh, if you guys have any ideas, stuff you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Uh, remember, they're perfectly legal to own in the state of Connecticut as long as you have a long gun permit or a pistol permit. So again, guys, don't forget, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, 
And uh, if you guys have any great ideas for some videos you want to see coming up, just let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys on the trail.